Hello, my name is Daniel Rosen. I'm an assistant professor at the pathology department at Baylor College of Medicine and today I'm going to talk about writing a scientific paper. My goal is for you to learn how to write a scientific paper. My objective is for you to describe the main features of the scientific writing, identify the elements of scientific writing, discuss the function, structure and writing style of each element of a scientific paper, and respect the academic integrity, honesty and ethics of scientific writing. So why publish? Probably you heard the term uh, or the saying publish or perish, but that's not the only reason we publish. We also publish to share the research and findings with the scientific community, to improve the patient care because you learn on the process, to get funding, to get promoted, to get a job, or to keep your job. Now let's briefly describe the components of a paper. First the title, which clearly describes the contents, the authors, which ensures recognition of the writers, the abstract, that describes what was done, keywords, that ensures the correct indexing, introduction, that explains the problem, methods, explains how the data was collected, results, describe what was discovered, discussion, implications of the findings, acknowledgments, uh, recognizes all the people who help in the manuscript, references, which references published material, and sometimes appendix to show the supplemental data. Most papers are presented in the following format, but a few journals prefer to have the material and methods section at the end of the manuscript. You will find the preferred format under the guide for authors on each journal. As we will discuss shortly, you will not be writing the manuscript in the presented form, in the presented order that I show on this slide. Before you start writing, you need to know your audience. Every journal targets a specific audience, and before submitting uh, your manuscript, think if that particular journal is right for you. You have to start with the end in mind. However, don't wait to have all your research completed. If you start writing, it will help you realize whether you're missing any data or you need to perform additional experiments. While you're writing, look for relevant literature. Do a comprehensive online search of the most relevant publications related to your topic. It is of very good practice to find purpose that both supports and oppose your findings. Read each purpose carefully and identify how they do differ or not with your findings. If you are writing a case report, focus on the similarities and differences of your case. You don't need to have a brilliant idea to start writing. Just start. Your idea will uh, develop uh, as you write. Also, it's very important that you check your writing. Use always formal academic language, avoid the, uh, using third-person pronouns, avoid slangs, avoid contractions like won't or can't, avoid cliches like time will tell or in today's world, don't use exclamation marks and avoid questions. So now we're going to describe how to organize your writing. You will not be writing the paper in the order the sections were presented. First you will start with your material and methods, then you will move to your results, introduction, followed by the discussion, conclusions, abstract, and finally you write your title. Though many papers may vary in the structure in the middle, the standard body of a research manuscript is the material and methods section. The purpose of this section is to make it possible of, uh, for interested readers to repeat the author's experiments and reproduce the results. The author must describe in painful detail exactly what they intended to do, what experiments were run, how they were run, what equipment and materials were used, how they were used, how much, how often, what, where, why, and when. For example, subjects, if you use animal, plants, or humans, what type of subject, subjects you use, the sample preparation techniques you use, the origin of the samples, all your protocols, data collection, equipment, what type of equipment. If you're using, for example, a centrifuge, how many RP RPMs the centrifuge was running, immunohistochemical stains, immunofluorescence, other molecular tests, also statistical techniques, tests, and software use.
For your result sections, you have to be concise and not wordy. It has to be easy to understand, it has to be focused, and you have to show sufficient data to test your hypothesis. Your results should not include raw data. You should avoid redundancy and you do not discuss or make conclusions or interpret any results in this section. Rather than telling the reader that a result is interesting or significant, show them how interesting or significant it is. For instance, rather than showing, saying the large difference in mean size between population C and population D is particularly interesting, write the mean size between this population and that population change by a few centimeters where the mean size of this population was such and such. Always include figures and tables, but do not include the same data in both the figure and the table. Do not duplicate data. Do not be redundant. It is best to present the data in a table unless there is a visual information that can be gained from using a figure. For example, a figure is useful for reporting a regression analysis, a line graph, things that change in time, or a difference between one population or the other. Each table and figure has several lines of text in the caption that explains the information that is being presented. This is, they are made to stand alone. A, a table's legend appears above it, while the legend for a figure appears below the figure. If the table includes the results of a statistical analysis, be sure to provide the information necessary for the reader to properly evaluate the analysis for example, the sample size. Use very simple graph. Don't complicate uh, the, the reading. Label them very clearly and always show the pictures and tables in the order that they were presented and described in the text. Don't make the reader jump from one picture to the other or one table to the next without having the same flow in the, in the, in the text. Here is an example of a case report where we decided to show under the results the patient's characteristics followed by the autopsy findings. A table is also included. In this next example is a case report where we show a table of the reported literature and the images of the most important findings. Some more complex papers require more detail and results can be quite long. In this case, uh, it's best to describe the results as the order, the order of the experiments were carried on. In this case, we show some mice experiments that were validated in tissue cultures and later on in human tissue samples with survival curves. In your introduction, you have to focus on the background information. You have to find relevant previous studies on this subject and state the problem and the gap in knowledge. Clearly state your hypothesis. The basic structure of the introduction consists of three paragraphs. The first one, you write what we know. The second one focuses on what we do not know about the problem. And the third one, why we did this study. In this example, the introduction of ALDH1 in ovarian carcinoma shows what we know about the problem. What we don't know about the problem is if you notice the sentence starts however, it remains controversial. And finally, why we did it. And the, the sentence states the purpose of this study therefore was to evaluate the association between this marker and some clinical pathological factors. The purpose of a discussion section is to interpret the result relating them to previous studies that the author or other authors have done. The author should begin discussing the section by restating the tested hypothesis, then he or she may begin the results, uh, interpreting the results in the light of the hypothesis. Remember to always discuss your results in the order that they were presented. Some ideas to discuss in your discussion section are have, you, have your results provided answer to your hypothesis? And if not, is there an alternative hypothesis? Is there an agreement or disagreement with the published literature? 
are there any sources of error that may have influenced your results or what are the next steps uh, for this study so as a basic structure you should write at least in this uh, your, your discussion in, in four paragraphs or more the first one you should describe what did this study show and remember again you will start saying um, in this study we show blah 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 on your second paragraph you have to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of your study on your third paragraph and up to how many you need you will discuss your results in the order that they were presented in the results section and finally in your last paragraph you have to speculate about future directions and the impact of current thinking or practice For example, you can write something like the purpose of this paper was, or in this study we examine, or we report this and that, and using this or that approach, we show that, and that will be your hypothesis, and whether you prove it or not. On your second paragraph, you can start saying, our results show, or using this approach, we found that, and then you will relate to the figure or table, and then the, you, you will start discussing similar results were reported by XXX at all. And in contrast, YYY at all have shown that. And this uh, difference of these findings are due to, and then you will repeat this format over and over again for each and every result you have. In this, uh, in this case, as you can see, we, we started with the phrase, uh, in the current study, we have demonstrated that. And we also demonstrated that. And that happens a lot when you, you are chasing one hypothesis, but along the way, you find additional information. Then we describe and we discuss the literature, like several studies. And likewise, in our results, so we describe what people have said and what are the, the findings, uh, either um, the same or, or different from the previous reported literature. You are completely free to carry out whatever research you want, so long as you can with this conclusion. So in your conclusion part, like I show in this paper, you can say, we conclude that, in this case, the activation of STAT3 and its translocation to the nucleus are frequent blends and blah, blah, blah. The abstract summarizes the major aspects of a paper. It is usually one paragraph long, about two to 300 words, and it should summarize the purpose of the paper, the methods you use, the major results, and your interpretations and conclusions. It should follow five, um, five ideas. The first one, you have to describe the problem that was uh, investigated and the gap in knowledge. This is usually one or two sentences long. The second sentence should state the purpose of this study. And it should be also one to two sentences long. And uh, why you and how does it differ from other studies? Your third idea or sentence should describe the methods, which would, should be very brief and to the point. Your fourth idea, you describe your major results, but not all of your results, just only the important ones. Your fifth uh, sentence should describe your interpretations. Again, one to two sentences long, and it should, it should summarize your interpretations of the results. Uh, sometimes some papers add a fifth, uh, or sorry, a sixth element, which is the implications of this of this paper. But uh, you can summarize it as conclusions as well. The title is probably one of the most important and difficult parts of the paper. This one is the longest title ever recorded for a movie, and if you wonder, there's also a part two. There are three major title formats. The first one is when you have an independent variable 
plus a dependent variable plus a population. For example, the effect of diabetes in body weight in children. The second one is those titles that pose a question. Does diabetes affect body weight in children? And the third one is an answer to a question. Diabetes increases body weight in children. You can follow any of these formats. Finally, we move to the references. To write the references, uh, I recommend using a reference management software, also called a citation management software or personal bibliographic manage management software. This software for authors um, record and um, help uh, the bibliographic citations. Once a citation has been recorded into this program, it can be used for uh, generating other bibliographies for other papers. Um, these software packages normally consist of this database with full bibliographic references that can be entered plus a system that generates a selective list of articles in any format that the journal requires. Some examples of these, I, I compiled them and you will see there are free options, some that are very expensive and others that are web-based, some free, some are not. Uh, the most commonly used is EndNotes, and you should be familiar at least with that one. And then you can explore all the other options that I show on this um, slide. Who is an author? Authors should fulfill the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors' authorship criteria. The first author is the one that does the bulk of the work. The contributing authors or middle authors um, also do major contributions to the manuscript and their order in the authorship list should reflect their relative contributions to the paper. The senior author is the one that goes at the end of the list, directs and oversees and guarantees the authenticity of the work, takes responsibility for the work, and can explain all of the results. Finally, the corresponding author is typically assumed to be either the first or the senior author, can communicate with the editors and the readers, provide information of their contributions, and ensures that everyone is aware of the status of the manuscript, the submission, its contents, authorship and the order of the authorships. I want to talk a few words about plagiarism. As Samuel Johnson uh, once said, your work is both good and original. Unfortunately, the parts that are good are not original and the parts that are original are not good. Some form of plagiarism include data falsification, data fabrication, and the most common stealing others' ideas, data or text. To avoid plagiarism, always properly cite your references. Each source should be listed in the bibliography, obtain permission to reproduce copyrighted protected material, and uh, if you need to quote, use a quotation mark when more than six words are copied. So now you know. I wish you happy writing and thank you for listening.